Let's make this interesting. Here. No one escapes the law! Uh. 
ever try shawarma? This is Ascension Peak, for it was here that Geno stepped into the sky and became one with the cosmos. Centuries passed as the faithful searched the stars, whispering that Genos lived in the night sky. Most thought them mad. Many hopeful pilgrims arrived, lost souls, forever wishing they too could leave their past behind. Until a broken soldier witnessed the impossible. The Ascended returned. Genos revealed what he had seen among the stars. The countless wonders. The unimaginable power. And a darkness that would one day threaten the realm. The Ruby Throne Room was abuzz with the news. Genos had returned. While her court gossiped, Leon spoke in hushed tones with a hulking figure. Khan, the Primus of House Ida, the General of its armies, and Chief Advisor to the Ruby Throne. If Genos could be convinced to join the Magistrate's armies, Leon could end this war. A victory that would give House Ico more power than ever before. The siege moves. Khan rallies his forces to battle, leading House Ico's royal guard to recruit the so-called god. And Khan does not take no for an answer. Two sisters. Two fates defined by this place. While all towns harbored darkness, true evil lurked in the village of Ceres. A portal to the Abyss, and it demanded to be fed. The Magistrate made its decision. One sister would be sacrificed to the Abyss, her life less important than its hunger. The girl accepted her fate, but for her sister, the choice to fight was an easy one. Alas, a common girl cannot defeat the Magistrate, or the Abyss. The sister was taken. Only a lock of hair was left, another of the Magistrate's meaningless gestures. With no hope left in the realm, she turned to a source of salvation, the Eternal Pyre, the cleansing flame from which we are reborn. 
the sister prayed for guidance for her loved one's soul. Most of all, she prayed for the strength to fight the Abyss, so that no others would be lost. As the sacrifice neared, the Void's hunger grew stronger and stronger, until the Abyss realized it hungered not for a soul, but for a body. The Abyss was unleashed, and the village of Ceres was destroyed. All were lost, save for one last soul. For what the sister had sought, the pyre had given, and the weak sister was no more, for she was Furia, cleansing flame incarnate. She would do what none had done before. She would stand against the abyss. The Paladins rejoiced, the Warder's relics were secured, and with them, victory. Until he attacked, the most feared pirate of the Eight Oceans, drawn to the ancient power the Paladins carried. On the open water, none could challenge Admiral Dredge. The Paladins were routed, the weapon seized for Dredge's treasure hoard. A dragon chooses its master, and Dredge was found lacking. He sank into the depths until he was leagues from the land of the living. But the pirate was far from death. The abyss bore Dredge back into the realm atop its horrid tentacles. The undead admiral sails the seas again and none will take his treasure. How long was it since Koga last climbed these walls? How long since he last stood among the thousand hands? This was not how Koga thought he would return to his family. But family doesn't try to kill you. Family doesn't brand you a betrayer. No longer would he wait. Koga would face his former master, and Zin would pay. The Thousand Hands would never forget the day Koga left. But the day he returned would be far worse. A warder? forces we could not control. The darkness has conquered all. This realm is lost. I must return. I must change what was. I am... our last hope. <laughs> 